Hey, what's going on everybody? Thanks for meeting me out here in the woods where today we're going to compare a vintage boy's axe to a new boy's axe. Real quick before we get started chopping, I'm going to show you guys up close both of these axes and discuss their differences as well as their similarities. Hey guys, So here we have the vintage boy's axe. This axe is a Kelly True Temper wood slasher. It's a Dayton pattern head. The head weight is two and a quarter pound and it is hung on a 28 inch handle. The new axe is a Council Tool Boys Axe Sport Utility Line. It is a Dayton pattern. The head weight is two and a quarter pounds and it is hung on a 28 inch handle. While both axes are essentially the same, there are some minor differences. Now, the vintage wood slasher axe has six eye ridges inside of the axe head that make contact with the wood that goes up through the axe. And what that does is it bites into the eye wood and helps prevent the handle from coming loose. Now, the new Council Tool Boys Axe does not have those six eye ridges. Now, that's not a bad thing, but it's just something you don't see uh, commonly done anymore in, in new axes. Now, Council Tool does offer the Boys Axe in their premium line. It's the Velvet Cut series. And from what I've heard is that axe head is forged with six eye ridges inside of the eye. Now I don't have any personal experience with that axe. So if any of you guys do own that axe or know for a fact that it has six eye ridges, please leave that down in the comments. One, I'm very interested to know if that's true. And I'm sure many other people uh, would like to know that as well. So now the main difference I would have to say when it comes to vintage versus new uh, axe heads, Dayton in particular, is a high center line cheek. Now, when I'm talking about the center line of the axe, I'm talking about this portion here. Okay, on a vintage axe, if you were to look down the axe, it almost pops out. It's a, it's very thick in here. Now you can see it's it's not a very thick axe. It's not chunky like a maul but it does have this portion here and this portion here are a lot lower than the center. So it has a high center line cheek. Whereas the newer ax, it's almost concave. It dips in here a little bit. So from here to here, you know, from this portion of the head to this portion of the head is all the same height. It doesn't have any thickness through the center of the cheek. Why that's important, um, Back in the day when they had the high center line, it helps with, it helps prevent the ax from sticking into the wood. So in theory you have less ax material in contact with wood. So if you stuck this ax down into the wood, you would have less surface area of the ax head making contact with the wood, essentially helping it not be stuck. Where a newer ax head, being that this is all the same height from here to here, when it sinks down into the wood, all this metal is contacting the wood in that cut. In theory, the ax should get stuck more. Now, I've used this ax quite a bit. Yes, it does get stuck, um, but so does this ax as well. Does it get stuck less? Probably, but I wouldn't say it's on a, such an extreme level where I would say that this, this I can, this is unusable. I cannot use this axe. Uh, absolutely not. I think both axes are great and while they do have a couple minor differences, I don't think it's as extreme as some people maybe make it out to be. Alrighty guys, we're going to start off with the vintage boys axe. Oh, I forgot to add, the high center line also, I find, helps pop the chips a little bit. So, just keep that in mind.
All right, you guys, now the council tool. You can see even though this is not a high center line axe, it still has no problem. That axe was getting a little stuck. This axe is also getting a little stuck. It's the nature of it, guys. It's, it's nothing crazy. And this axe doesn't have a problem popping chips either. Alrighty guys, starting off with the vintage axe. Excuse my accuracy, I'm having a tough time balancing here. Now the council tool. We're going down. Alright guys, 
right, so we'll give you a little bit more of a close up. We're going to start off with the council tool. All right, now we're gonna to try to go right next to it with the vintage foot slasher. guys unfortunately we're gonna have to wrap it up a little short here I would have loved to spend much more time out in the woods chopping but the rain is starting to pick up it's been kind of raining throughout the whole video but according to the sky that way uh, which is coming this way um, we're about 10 minutes out from being completely soaked and uh, I'd rather not do that so real quick um, vintage versus new I think both axes perform extremely well. I won't say one performs better or worse than the other. Now when it comes down to buying vintage versus new, of course it's way easier to buy a new axe. You go online, whether you go to, I personally got this from Whiskey River Trading. I'm not trying to uh, plug them, I'm not endorsed by them or anything like that. Just letting you know where I found mine. I think at the moment they are out of stock. But you could go to Whiskey River, Amazon, eBay, there's countless places where you can go pick up this Council Tool Boys Axe, brand new. It takes zero effort to buy it. It's somewhere around 55, 60 bucks. Uh, some places might offer free shipping, some may not. Boom, you put in your credit card information, the axe shows up at your door. Simple. And, not to mention, the Council Tool Boys Axe, and the Sport Utility line anyway, um, is pretty much ready to go out of the box. I tuned mine up a little bit, but if you're a person that may not be into that and just wants an axe they can go out and use right out of the box, you absolutely could do that with the Council Tool Boys Axe. Um, I don't know how the Velvet Cut series is, I'm sure it's phenomenal, and I don't know how the lesser valued one is either, which I also am sure is phenomenal. Um, I can only recommend what I own, I'm not going to recommend a product I've never used, it's just... I don't know, it's not right. Um, now as far as trying to find a vintage axe, yeah, you're going to have to put a little more work into it. Um, one, just time. Two, manual labor. I don't know if you could see, but this axe, you see the pole on this axe is absolutely beautiful. When I got this axe, it was on the original grind, original handle. It was absolutely in mint condition so I put my own grind on it and she was ready to go now that doesn't happen too often every other vintage head I have with the exception of maybe one or two I had to put a lot of work into it the pole was nice and mushroomed for me um, I had to straighten an eye out once I had a chip out of a out of the uh, cutting edge I had to repair so when you are buying vintage axes uh, there's a lot of things to look at because they're vintage and they're tools. They're not wall pieces So they were used and abused for years and years and years 
yes, you do come across very good uh, examples. Um, unfortunately, nowadays, you might be paying a premium for that. I bought this axe for somewhere around 15 bucks um, last October. You know, I think that's a pretty good deal, but now I'm starting to see these go for 50 and up. I actually saw a, a vintage wood slasher on eBay the other day. Guy was asking $125 free shipping. That's outrageous. It's 100% insane. At that point, I would not recommend that. Uh, today's day and age and today's market, it almost seems like $20 is a really good deal for a vintage boy's axe head. Um, if you get it on a handle and the handle's usable, even better. But uh, like I said, there's things you have to look out for when going out and buying a vintage head. And it's something I highly recommend you do, if, especially if you're first starting out, uh, getting your feet wet in that because um, you're going to learn. You're, you're going to have to learn. And if you're going to be using an ax, uh, sharpening, reprofiling, hanging, those are all things you're going to want to have to know because even buying a brand new ax, you might find that you want to modify it a little bit to fit how you, uh, to fit your liking a lot more. Or you might go out, brand new ax user, swing this thing and break the handle. And you're like, well, gee, I don't know what to do now. But you're going, eventually you're going to have to learn how to maintain your tool, whether it's right off the rip buying a vintage axe head or buying a brand new axe that you want to tune up or um, the handle will eventually come loose or break, what have you. Um, it's just the nature of it. I know I'm rambling on like crazy. I'm just trying to, you know, going off the cuff here, think of most questions I get asked. Um, and a lot of people ask me, well, should I buy a vintage axe or should I buy a new axe? I can't answer that. I don't really know what you should buy and I'll never tell you what to buy because then that kind of puts me liable if you're not satisfied and I don't want to do that. If it was me, I bought both. I have a vintage axe, I have a new axe, um, and I absolutely love them both. Now that I own both of them, do I wish I didn't have one? No, absolutely not. So if you want my absolute honest advice, um, like any of us that are into axes, all of us got the bug. We don't own one axe. It's just, that's how it goes. So if you don't have a brand new axe, a uh, brand new council tool boys axe or any other kind of boys axe, uh, I'm sure you'll end up getting one. If you don't have a vintage one, I'm sure once you get one and use it, uh, you'll see why so many people do love the vintage axes. So guys, sorry for chewing your ear off. I hope I didn't ramble too much. I hope it was some kind of informative and I wasn't just talking crap here. Um, if I left anything out, let me know down in the comments because I'm sure I did because I can't even remember what I said like two seconds ago. Um, yeah, if, if, I, if you guys want me to make another video um, and kind of go more in depth on this or if you think I... I nailed it here, or, uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm just, I'm running my mouth like crazy, I have no idea where I'm going with this, let me know down in the comments what you thought of the video, um, if there's anything I didn't answer, I can absolutely answer it in the comments, so with that said guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you on the next one.